Hey everybody, welcome to Adventures with Peps. We are going into a Warhammer White Dwarf Judge Dread article. This is an oldie magazine, so we'll hop to the other camera if I can get this to work. Let's see. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Ooh, technology. Right, ignore my paint pot and this weird random space that my face is now in. We're going to try and sort my setup out as we go along. It's it's a process. It's a process. Right, let's get into the mag. I've got to work out where my camera is. There we go. Let's get into the magazine. So we are looking at issue 83, which came out in November. This poor magazine, it got destroyed when I moved to Canada. Sadly, the box it was in got wet. Luckily, it was the only magazine book that was in the box, but yeah, it got wet. Very annoying, very annoying indeed. Anyway, we get the beautiful night pamp from the front there. That is a beautiful, iconic Warhammer Fantasy picture from back in the day. We get the Vikings, and then we get the contents. So we are interested in A Day in the Life in Sector 255. Everything else is just bonus. So we will work our way through the magazine and see how we can do. So open box, they talk a bit about some Dungeons and Dragons. Set five, the immortal rules. Warlock of Firetop Mountain that I owned. I owned that. I really should have hung on to my stuff rather than get rid of it. Uh, Call of Cthulhu Adventure. And then Middle Earth Role Playing. I also had that box. Ugh, and I got rid of it. I'm so sad. I did not realise that's what Merps was. It was the Middle Earth role-playing game. But there you go. Times now have gone. As an older man, I realise I should have hung on to them. Then we have a few more open box. And there's some great stuff. Talisman, I have that as well. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I would love to own that. It's the RPG Adventures. Then it talks a bit about the fantasy role-playing game, which we learned from the last White Dwarf, that it was a new release. So they're really going to be pushing that. We then learn a little book review by Dave Langford, which was The Postman, which became a uh, movie in the 90s, didn't it? With, uh, what's his name? He did Robin Hood. Drop me a comment below, because I can't remember his name, and I'm not going to look it up right now. Get Dungeons and Dragons advert. And then here we go. A day in the life of Sector 255. This is a patrol adventure for up to five judges covering the activities of a typical day in, sec in a sector of Mega City 1. Day in the life can be dropped into a campaign or included as part of a single longer adventure. It could even be chopped into pieces and used in other adventures. That's pretty cool. So it starts the day off. This is for your players to read through or get told. There's some uh, attacks happening on the sked skedway. The Wally squad are up to something. They're looking to take down an umpty bagging pandemic. A bow, a bopper around. I'm not sure what that means. A fancy dress open air bopper round is being held in the Mark Gascoigne Plaza classic. When was this? This was 80s. Yeah, 86. Okay, so the names in here will be very dated. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? Little Juve crew are demonstrating their new dance. A large crowd is expected. So that's like a, a rally. Public meeting. The Friends of Dread are holding their first public meeting at the Marvin Gaye Sky Rail station. That's a bit of a weird one. There's a H-Wagon shortage. Obviously, they're being used elsewhere. So you can't call in a H-Wagon. Oof. Satellite attacks. Communication satellite has been subjected to laser fire. So you've got to find out who's trying to ping the satellites. And then somewhere along the line, some perps have escaped from a holding post. So you've got to look out. Uh, what else we got? Then there's Judge Jude, the assigning officer turns to the PC and gives them some special patrol orders. So you got a little patrol. What is a griblig? A griblig. The street camera blah, blah, blah. It's in Prog 464 and 465. We're going to pause because I want to know what a griblig is. 
Okay, so Gribblig is, I'll try and pop up a picture here somewhere. It basically looks like a Care Bear, a super popular toy of the 80s. Uh, so they're going to be in trouble. There's a judge helping out as well. Then we move into phase two. I don't want to read too far in it in case I want to play it, but uh, this seems to involve SJS for some reason. We've got Robert Smythe, who is doing something with robots. He's messing around with robots. Uh, the PCs can charge Robert with anything from damaging a robot to mass murder. Oh my god. He's a dodgy guy. Uh, phase three, they join Mark Gaston Plaza, packed with citizens waiting to see the Juve's demonstration. So we're now at the dance section. Kane Alansky, he seems to have sector knowledge and he's just causing aggro. Uh, phase four, we're with Judge Bracken and we seem to be with a few judges actually, Judge Curry, Judge Folan, Judge Green. There's a perp called T Tobin Saws who is hidden behind a set of shelves that will give him 50% armor. Ooh, he knows weapon knowledge as well. It's a straightforward battle by the looks of it. Uh, and it's set in a lab with extremely valuable equipment. Phase five is doing a crime blitz on some mopads. Russell Teabag seems to be the guy that you're chasing down there. And then phase six has you going up against a call me sir, Judge Dread Android. The Android will not listen to reason and will attack anybody. Oh, okay. So basically he's like a rogue judge. He's running around pretending he's a judge, but he's actually an Android. It's going to cause some trouble. This guy seems to be, this is the laboratory mission from the last one, so we get a little map for that. So it is a pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward day in the life of a judge. It's one that if your GM isn't ready to play a proper game, you could just jump into that instead and play a few rounds. We then get the adverts for the Judge Dread games that are currently out. And I'm very lucky to have all three of them. Then we get a movie review. Uh, the Vikings miniatures again. They're really pushing them in this magazine. Sorry if I've drifted out of camera. Uh, the board game Sorcerer King. Never played that one. This is stuff that I really like. So we've got the dwarfs. Got Dungeons and Dragons figures. Lord of the Rings. Look at Legolas. Boromir. Gimli. Um, then we got Paranoia. I used to love these figures. I used to have a few. Back in the day, I think I may even still have this one for definite. But I used to use them in Judge Dredd back in the good old days because you could use every part of this. These are just weird looking uh, security guards. I think I used to use them as. But the droids were fully usable and then you had perps. Very simple to steal these figures. This is so cool. It's like a tin man. You could use him in Judge Dredd as well. And he obviously had a little dwarf repairman. And we have the judges of Mega City 1, Young Fire Dragon, some Troglodytes, Mind Flayers, I wish I had them. I'm not really a big D&D &D fan, but I do love the idea of the Mind Flayers. I think they're very cool. And we had some Night Horrors for the horror games like Call of Cthulhu. We then get, I have no idea why that is upside down. That's weird. Um, it's a long way to Tipperary, a guide from getting to A to B. Oh, okay. It's just being silly. It's about moving around in paranoia. Lone Wolf, great little choose your own adventure series if you've not read it. Definitely recommend trying to find them if you can. They're getting expensive, I think, to find the originals, but I do believe they still keep publishing them. Uh, we then get an advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Gaining experience. I won't spend too much time on these. I was only here for the Judge Dread. Then we got a Grenadier Models advert. We got some Games Workshop stores popping up now. Look, we've now got Nottingham, Birmingham, Newcastle, York, Sheffield, London, and Manchester. Wow. Seven stores in total. Uh, what do we got here? The Crude, the Mad, and the Rusty, a Warhammer battle game. 
by Ali Morrison, who created most of the early Warhammer monsters, I believe. Jez Goodwin, who now works at Warlord Games, I want to say. And Graham Davis. And it looks like we got Orcs fighting. The short two-player battle game uses Warhammer Fantasy rules based around the legend of Scrag the Slaughterer. Scrag has made his pack with the god Mal. He has led a Chaos Dwarf hold. Oh, so this is like dwarfs. Very fun. Very fun. We then get the Tin Man. Look. Little cut out with a Scrag. He's... They're saying that he's an orc in the story. Maybe? I don't know. Renegade. He's a Chaos dude, for definite, who's leading a Chaos Dwarf army. We then get... West End Games Tank Leader, $20. Looks like a tank on tank game. This was purely adverts here. There you go, a little cardboard tank on tank game. But yeah, this, this set of figures we used to play this one-off game that they put in this magazine. Very cool. Scrag the Slaughterer, Ogre Major Hero. He's obviously got to fight the Tin Man, maybe. The miniatures needed to fight out this special scenario are obviously available from these guys. So Scrag would be 150 for an ogre. Spikes Harvey Wotan, the Chaos Dwarf. He was 60 pence. The Tin Man, available for a limited period of time only, as part of the Tin Man and Oxy set, 150. Blood and Gore, the goblins, were a Dollar, uh, were one pound ninety five. We could buy the whole lot for four pounds. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Some rules for Cthulhu. Everything went black. While the flavor of Cthulhu is mainly derived from the writings of Lovecraft and associated authors, the way the game tends to be played owes quite a lot to pulp detective stories uh, that live in a world of violence. As Philip Marlowe said, down these main, mean streets a man must go. Investigates tend to travel streets even more sinister than what Marlowe encountered. So this must be like moving around dark alleyways. Rules for that. A short adventure for either Pendragon, Warhammer Fantasy role-playing, or Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And you can face off against the Black Knight. He obviously gets rules in all sets here. So you've got Warhammer Fantasy rules. Pendragon rules for him. And I guess there was probably D and D rules somewhere here that I'm not seeing. Oh, that's for D and D right there. Very first ones. A foray into the art crypts by John Blanche. So this was back when John Blanche was writing articles. Are they all his? I wish. I wish. We were still in the young days. <laughs> oh no, here you go. John Stiblick. I was about to say, they didn't look Blanche-esque. So it's this guy in the corner here. He is the artist of these three pieces, and they are beautiful. Very iconic. Uh, Psychonic Combat. Uh, the article is sequel to All in the Mind of White Dwarf 79. And it's to do with Advanced Dungeons and Dragons which was the main theme of this magazine back in the 80s. Then we got adverts. Got a Fud the Barbarian comic, where he obviously becomes a robot and seizes up in rust. Uh, some heavy metal stuff. Maybe showing what they're sculpting in the office. Oh, some of these are just amazing. This manacle, I remember having a picture of him on a combat card. And I used to love that model. I wanted to find it, along with these trolls. You very commonly found Chaos Sorcerer online, if you look up Chaos Sorcerers. And we got some Cthulhu-esque characters by the look of it along the top here. They call them New Gothic Horror. Uh, then a little article that is talking about how they sculpted. Some more adverts. Lots of adverts at the back here. This magazine's held up surprisingly well considering it got soaked. Uh, reader's letters, which I do enjoy 
having a quick read through. There's even a Judge one here. Um, what we got? Judge Dredd, Sultan walks. Actually, I'm a murdering swine. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, I think the Judge Dredd RPG system is great, but I can't see the pleasure in playing judges who are emotionally dispensers of law and judge. If Robert Povey thinks that children should admire Judge Dredd, who once beat up and interrogated a Jew on the ground of him acting suspicious, then he must have something wrong in his mind. Far better is it not to look up to Superman, Indiana Jones, or even Mad Max. Uh, what else we got? Why have there been no articles in White Dwarf for the excellent chill RPG? Okay, okay. And then there's judge offense, minor offense, failure to report a charge. Uh, so there's some ideas about how to punish your judges if they fail to do stuff. Very fun to read through. Ghostbuster, the role-playing game. Uh, Games Day 96 advert. The more adverts. And then obviously some adverts selling the games. Oof, this poor back page. That looked like it got most of the hit. Well, there you go. 95p of goodness. Uh, let me know if you want to see anything more in depth and I can maybe stick it up in the community section. But as always, I appreciate you watching. Bye bye.